What's going on guys, this is Gene Jensen. It is late fall, about to be early winter. We're moving into that transition and um, my bait selection is gonna change a little bit. So I'm gonna go over real quick the baits that I'm gonna have tied on during the early winter when those bass start to move out of the pockets and out of the backs of creeks and things like that. So stay tuned. All right, so we've had kind of a weird fall, summer, fall transition. It didn't last very long. It's, you know, summer lasted three or four weeks longer than it probably should have. Um, so we really didn't get a whole lot of that, that movement around here, at least in the Southeast, that movement back to the way into the back of the creeks. Um, a little bit, but not a whole lot. These bass, they moved about halfway back and now they're moving back out towards their winter holes water temperatures in in the um in the low 60s mid 50s and uh it's just kind of weird so i'm kind of a little early doing this video that's why the, the leaves still haven't you know haven't fallen off the trees and stuff like that but i wanted to get you guys prepared for this so the first one that i'm going to talk about first types of video of uh, videos <laughs> the first type of lures that i want to talk about are going to be your bottom baits um what happens is these bass move out and they get on these large flats and um or these large flat points that that just slowly taper down and they kind of hang out there and they feed on the bait fish and everything else and as the water cools down the crawfish get a whole lot more active than they normally are in the summertime so i'm going to drag a jig and I am like a kid in a candy store when, they, when they're biting a jig. But I'm going to change a few things up. When the water's really warm um, in the 70s and even into the, the, the high 60s, I'm usually going to throw a type of a jig with a trailer that's got a, a, you know, a lot of kick to it. But when it starts to get cold, when you get down to the 50s and the 40s and into the wintertime, I switch to something that has very little action. And I'm trying to get this skirt out of the way so I can show you. This is a Zoom. A, basically as it's a super chunk junior is what it is and i'll either use a super chunk which is a little bit bigger but a half an inch longer or I'll use a super chunk junior and as it gets colder and colder i almost exclusively go to go to a junior i like bigger jigs in the winter time and mainly jigs that have uh, living rubber this is a uh, a gridiron jig with a color i designed for seabird outdoors and all these baits and all the tackle i use are going to have links down in the description so you guys can go find them but uh, this is a great little dragon jig. A football jig was designed for dragging on hard, hard structure. Um, and so you're gonna cast it out using a, uh, a medium heavy rod. This is a seven foot six medium heavy, or if you fish in one with a heavy wire hook, this one doesn't have one. But if you fish one with a heavy wire hook, you wanna go to a heavy action rod. Um, 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon is usually what I throw a casting jig on or a football jig. And then eight one to one gear ratio reel just so you can catch up to those fish if they bite and swim towards you. Um, just a, just like I said, it's just a fun way to fish, but I'm gonna throw it out. I'm gonna let it sink to the bottom and I'm gonna slowly drag it until I bump into something and then I'm gonna shake it. And I'm gonna drag it and bump into something and I'm gonna shake it. And that's one more thing I almost forgot. As the water gets colder, I almost always have rattles on the jig. And I keep a little bag of rattles, and I typically keep a little bag of, of collars that I can slide over and hook these rattles into. But they are dry rotted, and I had to order some new ones, and they aren't in yet. So but this is what my rattles look like. And they just got a little bit of rattle to them. But they make that noise that crawfish make when they're on the bottom feeding. And so when I shake it, I want those rattles to rattle. So. Uh, yeah, I just slide a collar on. I just stuck, stick two rattles on there, and then I put the the uh, the trailer on. Is all it is. The next one, we'll go to that one in a second. All right. So, and I know I said I was going to talk about bottom baits, a lipless crankbait, and I don't fish it like you normally would fish a lipless crankbait in when the water gets cold um, or when it's getting cold. I throw it out and I'll put a jig, I'll put a link up the description on a video I shot last year doing this, but I throw it out, I let it sink to the bottom and I just slowly drag it and I bring in the slack and slowly drag it and bring in the slack. And I'm fishing it on a seven foot four cranking rod. This is a, an Ambi Black cranking rod, but it's a, it's a medium heavy moderate action rod. Um, seven three to one gear ratio reel. 
12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon line. This is a Brazex, Cigar Brazex, and I love a Brazex because it really is abrasion resistant. Uh, you can get it into cover and around rocks and things like that and not worry about it getting scratched up and breaking off on a fish. You still, it's it's fishing line, so you still want to check your line every once in a while just to make sure there's no nicks or kinks, but it, it really does last a whole lot longer. Um, but like I said, just throw it out, let it sink to the bottom, and I'm just barely lifting it off the bottom and letting it fall, and lifting it off the bottom and letting it fall. The colder the water is, the slower I go. As it gets down into those low 50s, I'm really going slow. So, lipless crankbait. To stay on the crankbait side, I'm getting away from square bills this time of year, okay? As the water gets colder and into those 50s, I go, I switch from a, uh, you know, a wider bodied square bill. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, here's a KVD 1.5. So I switch from the KVD 1.5 and I go to a flat sided square bill. Boy, that Kingfisher is going crazy. Um, and this is a six cents, um, uh, I never can remember the name of it, but anyway, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll link to everything down in the description. But it's a six cent square bill, dives about seven, eight feet deep. Um, and, it, and there's also some new flat sided square bills from, uh, or some new square bills from Strike King that I'll, I'll link down in the description just because they dive deeper than this one. And when you get, when they get down into those deeper flats, it's just good to have one that dives a little bit deeper. 12 pound test fluorocarbon, same uh, Brazex fluorocarbon. Uh, 610 cranking, which is a medium uh, moderate action cranking rod, 7 3 to 1 gear ratio reel, and uh, just an absolute man. When they're on these on a freaking square bit or a flat sided bait, it's it's amazing. And the reason you go to a flat sided bait is it's got that tighter wiggle and it, it is less obtrusive to their area. And, and it's just you get more bites when the water gets cold with a flat side. I also don't want one that has a whole lot of rattles. This one just has one little, one little knocker that doesn't make a whole lot of noise, and I really like that. Now, the exception, and I don't know why it is, and it goes against everything that I just told you, but is a wide-bodied, like a wiggle wart. This is a rock crawler from, from uh, Spro and a wide body that has a lot of kick back and forth and, and really comes through rock and hard cover really good. Uh, for some reason, just they love it when the water gets cold. So don't overestimate or don't underestimate this one. It really, really does work. Um, and it just goes against everything that I've ever been taught about cold weather. They always want a tight wiggle with this one. They want it. I mean, and they'll hit it. And, and I think it's because bass, when it's, as it gets colder, they tend to use, and as they get more and more lethargic, they tend to use their lateral line more. And their lateral line is how they feel vibration in the water. So they tend to, to try to feel the bait coming more na more when they get lethargic than when they do when they're in the summertime and then they're and when they're feeding. They're more sight feeders when they're when they're really when the water's warm. Just my theory, but I really do from from years of doing this. Uh, I really do think that's what happens, and that's why that wider wo wobble really does um, uh, get their attention. All right, so the next one is a fun one. It's probably my most fun bait to fish in the winter time. Um, matter of fact, hold on a minute. Where's my other box? Okay, I want to get a couple of different types out, but uh, it's a flutter spoon. Now, I've been wrecking them this week on a flutter spoon, and as soon as they start moving out and they get out on those flats and they get deeper and deeper, a flutter spoon can really really ha make your day and they and it's just all a reaction bite and um, I just launched a video matter of fact I'm filming it I've launched it today um, but you guys will have already seen it by the time you see this one but it's all about fishing the flutter spoons um, I, I usually carry two or three different sizes this is about the largest one that I'll throw um, I will throw the six or the little four and a half inch I will throw, well, this one's another one that I'll throw a little bit, you know, you see they're about the same size, a little bit longer on this one, but I don't get much longer than that. I don't throw the big ones. I just feel like the big ones spook the fish. You may catch one big one out of the school, but you're gonna spook the rest of the school. Um, and then another thing I'll tie on, and I don't have, do I have one? Yeah, I do. Is a jigging spoon. And let me find a decent looking one. All of mine are just totally beat up because I've had them for so many years. But just a, this is just a heavy, flat jigging spoon that you jig directly under the boat if you get over top of them as they get be deeper. And this is great all winter long, way, way into the cold months. Um, but I'm throwing this on a medium heavy 
seven foot three rod, eight one one gear ratio reel, so you can keep up with the fall or, or bringing the slack line in. Also, if you as, so you can get the fish to the boat faster because they really can use the leverage from these heavy spoons to throw the weight. And uh, and so yeah, like I said, I'll link to that video right up here. I'll put it in a little card right up here. But uh, spoon man, it's so much fun. All right, the next one. And I talked a little bit about this in my spinnerbait video recently, but as the water gets colder, I get away from the willow leaf spinnerbaits and I almost go exclusively Colorado blade. And I might even go a, a larger a size blade than this one, but I'll go Colorado blade just because it allows me to be able to, to slow way down. It has enough resistance and I'll, enough vibration and it'll it'll make it make it to where I can just slowly reel it, keep that blade moving, get it maybe a little bit deeper with a heavier spinner bait and that kind of stuff. But it really is a, a great late fall, early uh, winter bait. Now as they get deeper and deeper, it gets harder and harder to fish these things. So I usually get away from them as the fish get down into 25, 35 feet of water. Um, I'm fishing on a seven foot two medium heavy moderate action rod. Uh, the, the chatter crank rod that, that uh, 13 Fishing makes is an excellent uh, spinner rate rod. And this is just a little bit shorter. This is a muse anyway, but a seven three to one gear ratio reel. Uh, 12, 15 pound test fluorocarbon, same. It's an Abrazex fluorocarbon. And, uh, and yeah, man, it's just a lot of fun. Last but not least, this is something that I really don't take credit for <laughs> throwing this in the winter time. Alex Rudd from Alex Rudd Fishing, Ben Nowak, all of my buddies that I, that I kind of hang out with, all the YouTubers, and then even some of the guides that are up on Chickamauga and Gunnersville and th things like that tell you to throw big swim baits in the winter time. It doesn't make any sense to me, but from it's, this is just something I'm going to try this winter. I'm not saying that I've been totally successful doing it because I haven't done it much, but throw a big swim bait. Um, something that doesn't have a whole lot of kick on the tail. Uh, if you want to throw a soft plastic one, throw one with the, with the, um, with the wedge tail instead of the boot tail. I love, um, you know, baits like this one. This is a, a, a Mike Buca bull shad. It's a, an eight inch and it will and literally it's just like it, you can fish it super slow and it has great action and i don't know a whole lot about it but it's something i'm going to do this uh this winter and hopefully i can make some videos for you but i have it on an eight foot heavy action rod this rod's rated for four to eight pound, eight ounce baits uh, i actually have it on this is probably not the best rod for it i have another one at home that's like a broom handle it's rated for all the way out to 14 ounce baits and it's probably the one i'll be throwing it on this just happens to be the only swim bait rod i have in the boat right now um uh, eight one to one or I, I actually throw it on a seven three to one gear ratio reel 25 pound test uh fluorocarbon or monofilament i don't like to use braid because if this thing ever backlashes even the 65 brown pound braid can't withstand the amount of shock that it happens um when it comes to an abrupt stop stop with a big heavy bait on so i always try to have something that has a lot of stretch on it And that's it. That's my suggestions. I don't have a whole lot, um, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of extra stuff that I really will throw, at least during this period of time. I usually can cover any depth possible with what I have right here. And uh, if I can't, you know, I've got reaction baits, I've got baits I fish slow, I've got baits they'll be feeding on. Uh, I might throw a lizard or something, but this is really, I, I literally pulled them off of my deck and laid them down and did, did a video and maybe and tied just a couple of extra stuff on. But most of it was already in my boat and ready to go. So uh, be sure to check out my new website, flutemaster.com. Check it out. This, this shirt is, I love this shirt. I wish I could show you the, well, I can show you the back of it. Let's see, without you guys seeing my butt. But uh, <laughs> I got all new apparel, all new stuff coming out. Um, but uh but yeah, go check that one out. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go out and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.